Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you are new, welcome to my channel. I am Jamie Beth. Today we're going to go over something I am asked a lot. What do certain products do? Why do we need them? And I'm going to go over a few products and what you are actually supposed to use them for and why it is important to have them as part of your skincare and makeup routine. I'm not going to go over a lot of the more obvious things like eyeshadow, blush, um, lip liners and eyeliners and mascara because we all know what we use those for. I'm talking about skincare products and moving on to like primers, color correcting, foundation, concealers, cream products, stuff like that where I am asked a lot of questions on all the time. So we're going to start off with skincare products. If we want to remove makeup or even just clean our skin, you're going to start with a cleanser. You want to make sure your cleansers are water soluble and gentle and are able to remove makeup as well. Now I use a separate product to remove my makeup and um, as one to clean my skin but they do make products that will do everything for you and you don't have to use multiple products so if you're someone who doesn't want to use 5,000 products to do one thing um, look for a cleanser with makeup removing abilities that is water soluble and gentle on your skin. You don't want to use soap. Soap has a very basic pH balance to it and it can dry out your skin and cause other skin irritations. So don't use the soap you wash your hands to remove your makeup and clean your skin. And since everyone's skin is different, you want to make sure that you are buying the product that is for your skin type. So there are products that are specifically made for people with sensitive skin, dry skin, oily skin, um, a combination of the different skin types. So just kind of be aware of what you are purchasing so that you're not using a product that actually has a negative effect on your skin versus a positive one. I do have a video that talks about skin type and how to determine what your specific skin type is and I will link it um, either up here or down in the description box below. Another product that people ask me a lot about are toners. What's the purpose? Do we really need them? What do they do? To an extent, yes, I think toners are a very, very good addition to any skincare regimen. Um, they help remove excess dirt, makeup, um, and oil residue if your cleanser didn't do it. So it's just kind of an added cleansing step to your skincare regimen. It also has... Um, Toners can also provide anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidants, and help clear out pores. So it's just a, I guess think of it as a pre-moisturizing or pre-serum um, using to clean the skin before you apply another type of product to it. The next thing we're going to talk about are serums. I get asked about serums all the time, almost as much as I'm asked about primer. Serums actually are full of beneficial and active ingredients. They have antioxidants and anti-aging ingredients in them. These serums allow your skin to fight free radical damage and stimulate collagen production, leaving your skin healthy and youthful. Serums penetrate the skin at a deep level, allowing the active ingredients to work better and to keep skin more hydrated. I recommend if you're going to use a toner and a serum, you're going to um, first clean your skin, then do the toner, then do the serum, then do moisturizer. And that is the steps that I would take if I used all of these products. Now, again, I don't normally wear serums. Um, I'm not sure what serum I would use at the moment. I know a lot of people use the anti-aging one or the firming, you know, but I don't really think I need it at this time, so I don't use a serum. I do do a cleanser, a toner, and I will put on a mask and then do moisturizer, but I don't necessarily add serums anywhere in that. Lineup. It doesn't mean I think they're bad. I think they're a good product and I think that um, you just need to make the choice whether you're going to use that product or if you even want to um, and apply it to your skincare regimen and see how it pans out. Next thing I'm going to talk about are masks. If you want to involve a mask in your routine, I would do cleansing, I would do the toner, then I'd put on the mask, 
use the serum and then moisturize. I'm a lover of sheet masks. I think sheet masks are wonderful. I always use a sheet mask. I rarely use cream mask or um, any other of those types of masks. I'm always using a sheet mask. You can buy a sheet mask for anything. So if you want to brighten your skin, there's a sheet mask. If you want to nourish your skin, there's a sheet mask. If you want to um, add more energizing or a calming effect, there's a sheet mask for it. There is a sheet mask for anything, super hydration, you know, which I, a lot of my masks are for hydrating the skin and giving it an extra boost of that hydration because my skin in the winter time is super, super dry. And the nice thing about the sheet masks is you can use them every single day and it's awesome. Every day you can use them where a lot of the other like cream type of masks, you might only be able to do it once a week. So next we have moisturizer. Moisturizer is the last thing you're going to do. It moisturize that skin, get that skin nice and healthy and feeling soft and protected. Many different types of moisturizer. It is a must to finalize that skincare routine in the morning and at nighttime. And no matter what type of skin type you have, you need to put moisturizer on your skin. I don't care if you have super oily skin, super oily skin needs to be moisturized as well. The excess oil does not help moisturize your skin. I know there's a lot of people that might even say yes to that. No, it doesn't. It truly doesn't. You do still need to have a moisturizer. It does not help um, make your skin more oily. That is the common myth with moisturizer and oily skin. Moisturizing your skin will not make your skin more oily. Your skin is reacting in a way that it's producing more oil and that is why your skin is oily. It has nothing to do with moisturizer. If you don't use any of the other products that I have mentioned, use a cleanser or a makeup remover and use moisturizer. Those are the two most important ones. The other ones add different benefits and are great, but above anything and everything else, cleanser, moisturizer. Moving along to primers. Now primers, um, I think primers are very, very, very important. And I think that you will notice a huge difference in your makeup and how your skin looks if you apply a primer before anything else. So we're talking about, we're done with skincare. We've applied our moisturizer. We've given it a chance to soak into our skin. Now we're gonna add a primer. And I know it's another product to put on your skin. It's okay. You're going to really love the benefits of a primer. I guarantee it. If you have not used a primer, start using a primer and then put on your makeup and see for one, how well your makeup looks two, how long it lasts, because it will last longer with primer underneath it, and three, just the overall appearance and smoothness of your makeup throughout the day. There are many different primers. There's face primers, lip primers, and eye primers, and they all have their benefits, and I do think they're all important. I don't use the, um, the lip uh, primers because I don't normally wear lipstick. I do chapstick and lip gloss a lot. What face primers do is help enhance the smoothness of your skin and minimize your pores. So if you have big, big, big pores, it will shrink those pores down and give them the appearance of almost being non-existent. And I love that because I have huge pores. And that is why you'll see me kind of pressing that primer into my nose sometimes. And it'll be my nose and like right here is where my pores are like really big. So I kind of get that primer pressed in there because it kind of fills it and smooths it and makes it look like I don't have any pores whatsoever, which I love. And it will reduce appearance of like redness. If you have a lot of redness to your skin, it will help kind of blur that out. So when you put on that foundation, you won't be able to see it through the foundation. It just gives your skin an overall smooth and refined look to it, as well as making your makeup last a lot longer than it has or it would if you did not have it on at all. Now, eye primer. 
will help your eyeshadow stay on longer. It'll help your eyeshadow from creasing or flaking or cracking or doing anything like that. It does help keep it smooth and nice all day long. Another common um, question is regarding color correcting. And color correcting seems to have just kind of gained popularity throughout social media within the last handful or so years. Um, color correcting in the color wheel is actually very interesting and color correcting targets specific things such as dark circles or dark darkness on your face um, it helps conceal bluish or greenish or yellowish tones to your skin help with really any type of thing that you don't like about your skin it will help cover it up so that when you put on your foundation your skin looks a little bit more flawless there are a lot of color correcting products out there you can get like little palettes you can get um these like little tubes and whatnot there's this is a pen there's a whole bunch of different color correcting um, products out there they're all really good i really like the la girl um, color correcting products i get asked a lot of um, what colors do i use for certain things and um, when do you apply the color corrector and you apply color correcting products after you have primed your skin so we put on the primers that we are going to put on for the day and then you use the color correcting products and you do it because the primer is going to help all of this st other stuff you're putting on your face last all day long and you really want if you're trying to conceal things that you don't like like darkness or yellowness or redness to your skin these are going to also last all day long so that doesn't start coming through your makeup or wearing off throughout the day and the different colors combat different things so for instance um, green color correcting so that little green color over there helps with redness acne and rosacea green is the opposite of the color wheel from red so it is perfect for hiding redness to your face such as pimples acne scars rosacea using green to combat these areas will help those areas not show up through your foundation moving along to orange or red color correctors this is a red one um, orange and red color correcting should be used on darker skin tones if you have darkness under your eyes or dark in any um, like a bluish um, or even greenish tints or markings on your face this will cover those up beautifully before you put your foundation on if you are someone with a little bit lighter skin so like you know white <laughs> very pale to almost medium like a light medium um, tone to your skin or skin color, I would recommend either a peach or a pink color corrector to help with the darker areas of your skin. Moving along to yellow um, color correcting. Now yellow helps combat those dark purple like bruises or like dark purple areas to your skin it will help lighten that up right away it also helps kind of hide um veins so if you have some veins that are showing up that you kind of or don't really want people to see it will help with that as well um purple a lot of people use purple purple helps with a dull complexion so if your skin is looking a little more on the dull side use purple to help remove any of those like dull or yellowish tones to your skin um, and then apply your foundation and that will not show up so next up is concealer and why concealer is important to put on after your foundation and what concealer does is it helps brighten up those darker areas of your face so mostly under the eyes and like right in the middle of your forehead a lot of people put it down on their chin you're actually just adding the concealer um, not only does it brighten but it also adds light to your skin after putting on the foundation your skin's one color and your skin isn't normally one color anyway so we want to add depth back to our skin and one thing to do is to add light where lightness normally hits your face so it'll hit your face right in your 
right in your forehead. It'll hit usually on your chin and it'll hit by your cheeks. So not only are you brightening, you are adding the lightness back to your skin to make your skin look a little bit more natural and not, that, um, and not in a way that you just put a bunch of foundation on it. Um, what I do, and because again, I'm in my 40s, and a lot of times you will see people putting on concealer and they'll put it on like a little triangle almost and they'll just slap it on under their eyes. If you are um, 35 or older, you're not gonna wanna apply concealer this way. I only apply concealer right here and right here. And then I might put a dot there and a dot on my chin and that is it. And then I blend it all out. And when I blend my concealer out, I start where that dot is. I kind of just go in a little bit of a circle and come up and I try to get the least amount of concealer up to my eye because I do have under eye wrinkles. The concealer is going to get in there and then you're going to see wrinkles much more than you normally would and that is not what you want to do. You don't want to enhance things like wrinkles. Um, you want to just kind of brighten it up without causing something like wrinkles to show up more. Another question I'm asked a lot about is contouring and I'm actually going to have a video solely on bronzing and contouring um, at a later date. So I'm not gonna go into that right now because I do wanna go more in depth and actually show you how to properly do that. So we're gonna skip that right now. One of the last things I'm gonna cover is um, setting powder and setting spray. So setting powder is what you will put on your skin after you've applied your foundation and your concealer. And if you do cream contour after you've done that as well. And all that is, is it's setting that foundation, concealer, and everything in place. And it does help keep your makeup on all day long. It helps smooth and it helps your makeup last. So I do highly recommend that step. You, and if you don't want to do the setting spray at the end of everything else, don't do it. That's fine. There's many days I don't put setting spray on. But what setting spray does is it helps set all of the makeup in one place. I use the um, one size here and it's on till dawn mattifying setting spray. Um, and it does, it's just another added barrier to that makeup that's on your face and it does help it last a little bit longer. Um, but if you don't want to put another product on your face, don't do it because the setting powder is going to set all of that in place anyways. The primer that you put on your eyes is going to help that eyeshadow stay on all day long. So you really don't need 100% this last step. If you want it, do it. Again, it's just one more added benefit, but you don't necessarily need it. Well, that is my video for today. I hope I've answered some of the questions I get asked the most. If I did, awesome. If you have any other questions or any other products that you have questions on, please put that in the comments below and I will try to answer those for you. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to hit that um, subscribe button if you haven't already as well as a little notification bell next to it to be notified of all the upcoming videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you again soon. Bye!